If you've been around the vestibular community or listened to any of my previous episodes, you have heard me refer to VEDA or the Vestibular Disorders Association many times. I have been a VEDA ambassador since 2017, helping spread awareness and support warriors around the world. When you think of VEDA, what comes to mind first? Practitioners, support groups, pink flamingos. What comes to mind for you? Well, after this conversation, VEDA, Vestibular Disorders Association, will mean so much more. The magnitude of things this organization has to offer is enormous and ever-changing due to its volunteers and all the people behind the scenes, like today's guest, Cynthia Ryan. Cynthia has worked in nonprofit management for over 18 years. Prior to her dedication to nonprofit work, she honed her leadership skills by managing a financial research firm for 12 years. Interestingly, Cynthia's mother, Eileen, suffers from Meniere's disease, vestibular migraine, and BPPV. Stepping into her role as Vita's executive director and hearing stories from vestibular warriors all over the world, Cynthia has begun to understand a little more intimately what her mother has and continues to live through. When Cynthia is away from Vita, she enjoys reading, gardening, abstract art, volunteering at local animal welfare organizations, hiking with her husband Todd, and spending time with their dog Zena. And yes, Cynthia shares that she is indeed a warrior princess. Please welcome Cynthia. Welcome, Cynthia Ryan. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you, Heather. I am so excited to be on your podcast. (laughs) Well, there's so much I know going on with Vita, and I know that um, the community doesn't know half of it. So I wanted to touch on a little bit about that. But I also, when I first met you in Oregon, I learned that your mother was um, had Meniere's disease, uh, as well as vestibular migraine and BPPV. And I was wanting to touch on that to start off learning about your life with her living sure. with those disorders. Sure. Yeah. So you yeah. Share us a little bit about of- you. It's kind of an interesting connection. It's not like, um, you know, I, I reached out to Vita um, and, you know, applied for the job because my mother has Meniere's disease. You know, I was looking for a job and Vita was looking oh for an goodness. executive director. And That's it awesome. was just, you know, um, a, a, a perfect, uh, a perfect match. Um, so, um, so let's see, my mother, um, as you said, she has Meniere's disease and, and as with so many vestibular patients, that's not what, what it was diagnosed as initially, Mm. you know, I remember being um, a teenager and my mom having these vertigo episodes. And, um, and at the time, I remember one in particular, I was, um, I think I was 16, 15 or 16. Uh, and my, my father was out of town. So, and it happened in the middle of the night, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, and my mother was, you know, kind of calling out to to me and my sister um, because this this crazy thing was happening. And you know how scary it is. Uh, and uh, so we rushed into her bedroom and we called 911. And all of a sudden, like, I swear, nine uh, firemen and paramedics or, or paramedics were in her bedroom <laughs> dealing with this. You know, oh so here goodness. we are, you know, two teenagers and my mom in the middle of the night with all these firemen um, trying to figure out what was going on. And um, at the time, it was diagnosed as labyrinthitis, which is mm-hmm. typical. And, and you know, it could have been, you know, I don't remember right. specifically, but that that's a, a typical progression where, you know, you have an infection, it's a short term thing, it's not effectively treated, and then it becomes chronic. Uh, or, you know, maybe at the time it was actually Meniere's. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, you know, through, you know, throughout my lifetime, we, you know, she has had numerous uh, vertigo attacks. Uh, and, you know, I, I think like so many family members, we uh, we saw and experienced the acuteness of the attacks without recognizing what was going on for my mom between them or, mm-hmm. um, or, or realizing that this was something that was uh, really uh, majorly impacting her life. And I think that she probably minimized it to some extent uh, because 
she was never, it wasn't, I mean, even, if, even at the, at the point in time that she was given a diagnosis, I think it was minimized and not, it, it wasn't, it was like, okay, here, here you go. Here's some medication to cover it up. Um, right. <laughs> and, uh, and then, you know, it, so, so we didn't, didn't really think of it as a chronic illness. Mm. And, and I think that, you know, even, I mean, I was, uh, I was in my forties by the time I was working with, I started working with Vita. So even uh, until then, um, we didn't really see it that way, but then I started hearing my mom's story over and over through my work Mm. with Vita. You know, I would be talking with vestibular patients and I swear it was the same story. You know, my mom's story of, you know, these things happening and, um, not knowing what was going on. And, uh, and that made it more real. And, and, and I learned a lot about my mom's experience, um, through the experience of other vestibular patients. And, uh, you know, and I think that that's, that's one of the, uh, the wonders and the specialness of our community of, of Vita's, the, the, um, we we call them vesties now, you know, the (laughs) vestie community that we've built is, um, is that, people can share their stories and other people can relate to them. And, uh, and we really would like that to be, you know, well, we know that it's validating for the people who um, are similarly um, exper- experiencing similar symptoms, but we also hope that it's educational for the people who, who aren't for their family right. members, their friends uh, and, and the public as a whole, you know, we, that's part of our, uh, our mission and, and part of our, uh, you'll, probably here and um, uh, on our on our web page and uh, in our community making make vestibular visible that that's the goal is you know there's this funky word vestibular and nobody knows what it means really um, but they 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 do uh, they, they get it once you start describing it you you may have had this experience where mm-hmm. um, you tell somebody like I'll be in the grocery store line and they'll ask me you know what I do and and I'll, I'll say, well, you know, I work for the Vestibular Disorders Association. We advocate for people with inner ear balance disorders. And initially you see this glazed look on their face. <laughs> right. Um, and then they're like, oh, yeah, um, I know somebody. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. everybody has, everybody's life has been touched by someone who has experienced um, a vestibular problem, whether it's a, you know, short term or a more chronic condition and they can get it, um, but they need that they need that education and the context for it. So we want to, right. I, 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 people who are listening may have heard me say, say this before, but I kind of akin it to um, our, our awareness efforts to celiac disease. You know, 10, 15 years ago, nobody knew what celiac disease was. It was a weird right. medical term. And now everybody, they hear celiac and they immediately think, gluten-free so they can make Mm -hmm. that association. And that's the association we want to make with vestibular disorders is vestibular dizziness and balance vertigo. You know, if they Mm -hmm. can at least get that, then they can, you know, get a visceral feel or, or or understand what, what this is about. So, um, so yeah, so my mom has uh, Meniere's disease, which has um, really affected her, her life. My mom is a very outgoing and vivacious person. She's the kind of person that would just, you know, you're in public, you're in a mall and she'd just walk up to anybody and start talking to them. Mm-hmm. And then she'd want to bring them home, you know? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um, but with Meniere's disease, it really does, it isolates you, you know, yeah. um, because her, um, obviously her hearing has deteriorated to, you know, she's, she's, uh, um, she's 90 now. So um, it's deteriorated to a, a pretty significant point where um, co- everyday conversations are virtually impossible, even with a yeah. hearing aid, you know, we've had to, you know, we've gotten her um, hearing aid upgrades uh, over the years and, and really try to, to keep her um, so that she can engage with people, but it's hard. It's mm-hmm. gotta be a one-on-one conversation. You've gotta be, you know, she's gotta be able to watch your lips um, and that isolates her. It means that she can't participate in um, in group conversations. She can't go to um, to, to social events. Um, you know, even uh, we had a, a a birthday party for her a couple of years ago, where you know at least the the kids were getting together, and uh, and and that's difficult. She can only interact with people you know one at a time, and mm-hmm. uh, and it really overwhelms her. Um, and 
you know, you know, all the, the other things, the, um, her vertigo episodes have decreased in frequency, but her imbalance has increased Mm -hmm. so that she has, you know, chronic imbalance. Um, she's fallen and broken her hip. Uh, you know, she went from using, finally, it took us a long time to convince her to use a cane. Um, and she had to get one of those, um, Oh, what are they called? It, It was a fancy cane. It had to be stylish. Um, uh, and then to convince her to use a walker um, was also a big deal. You know, um, she didn't yeah. want to be seen as, you know, as that old woman. Um, and again, had to go fancy. It was red. <laughs> she named it Ferrari. So you know, <laughs> good for her. There and go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's funny. So um, uh, so it, it really, yeah, it definitely impacts her life. Um, and on top of that, she has vestibular migraine and BPPV and um, so as everybody out there with BPPV knows, you know, going to the dentist, is, you know, going anywhere where you have to put your yeah. head back, all of those things, you know, it's like a trifecta. And yeah. that's not uncommon in the vestibular community to have more than one condition. And, and that's part of what makes diagnosis so challenging. What would you say, Cynthia, was one of the biggest challenges growing up with a parent with a vestibular disorder? Um. Well, I, I think I, I will be honest that it's hard to think about about what it was like back then mm-hmm. because I'm so in the moment of what it's like now and, and my right. new awareness. But I think that one of the things that's challenging is that you see you see your parent as someone who is invincible. And, uh, and it's really hard to have a parent who has, um, who has a disability, um, or and, and you certainly don't even think of it that way, but who, um, who is physically challenged, um, you, it, it, and vulnerable, it's hard to see your parents as being vulnerable, I think is, is. is one way of putting it. Um, and, uh, and it's hard to know what's going on. I mean, you know, even in, I mean, obviously in that acute setting where, you know, she's having a vertigo attack and we're calling 911, we know there's something going on. We don't know what, and and probably it's, it might never even be explained to us. So it's always just this, this thing. Um, right. And so, and it, it might be hard. I think it's, I think that's, it's a hard thing to explain to um, a child, even a teenager, what's sure. going on, especially a younger child that, you know, there's this thing that's happening and, and, um, uh, and your, your parent, you know, your mom needs help. Um, yeah. And she can't, you know, and, and that in that moment, she can't be there for you. Yeah. That's so I think it was tough. hard to understand. And, and also to, to, to differentiate, to break apart, you know, how much of this is, is actually a physical thing and how much of it is, you know, my mom, you know, cause right. they're, they're, they're one in the same, but they're different. If you know what I mean, I you do. know, I, I didn't know if mom was just, you know, being dramatic um, or if this was a real thing. Well, Cynthia, um, I must and- tell you as a sufferer of Meniere's and vestibular migraine, I started to question myself at one point, am I overreacting? Is this, am I blowing things up? Is this really happening? Or am I bringing this on myself? All those things. So, yeah. And it doesn't yeah. help when the people around you, you know, aren't validating sure. what yeah. you're going through and, and or are directly questioning it. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Wow. 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 Well, I'm glad she got her Ferrari. <laughs> I know. And, and, you know, it is, I mean, think it, I think it's a, you know, after all of these years now her family understands, you yeah. know, it's not that we dismissed what was going on, but we have a new appreciation. And interestingly, um, so my mother uh, lives with uh, one of my brothers um, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, he's her, he's her caretaker. And, um, and, you know, he, uh, uh, and he is an, an amazing, amazing person and an angel for, you know, all that he does to, to, to support my mother. Mm. Um, but it, you know, it's still hard for him and, you know, his wife to, to really understand what mom is going through. Um, fast forward, um, my brother, unfortunately, 
uh, uh, late last year was in an auto accident and suffered a concussion, which has uh, had, you know, vestibular impacts, what we would call a mm. vestibular concussion. And so he's been through, he has been going to um, vestibular rehab for mm-hmm. this concussion, and it's given him a whole new um understanding of what it's the 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 things that you d- really don't see like the cognitive fatigue which is one of the oh, things yeah. that i think is the most frustrating for people mm-hmm. um and certainly has been for my brother um and it's it's one of the most the things that's the hardest to explain um and that you know it's that it can come on without any, um, you know, without any reason, you know, it's, right. it's one of the things that, you know, it's, it's the reason that you, you have to cancel that event at the last minute, mm-hmm. you know, um, yeah. uh, that you, where you have a difficult time having conversations because you just can't focus. Um, and, uh, and other people, and, and, and it's hard to say, I have this, you know, excuse me, I'm not, I'm having a difficult time communicating because this thing is going on. It's so easy for people to just dismiss that or, or to, um, to think that there's, you know, that there's something else wrong with you, you know, that's, that's not a physical thing. So I think that that's, you know, it's, you don't push it on anyone, but the, the saying that you don't get it until you get it, I think is real. Yeah. It's, that's one of the hardest things to, um, to really be okay with saying that, you know, you have to cancel those plans or say no. And I, I'm guilty of that. It's, it's, it's hard. It's something that, um, you have to do for yourself. It's a form of self care, but, it, and it's something I, I'll be good, good at for a little while. And then I'll backslide and take on too much and then I'll feel it. And I'll be like, okay, I'm not going to do that again. So yeah, it's yeah. a tough one. Well, yeah. it's certainly something that I've integrated into my, um, certainly my work life, but also my personal life because of my experience working with vestibular, uh, with people who have vestibular mm. problems. You know, if if I have a, ma- a meeting scheduled with, uh, you know, one of my um, volunteers or board members, and then they say, I, I just can't make it because, you know, I'm having an episode. I'm like, okay, yeah, of course. Yeah, I know how hard that is. That's not a problem. We'll we'll definitely reschedule and and yeah. and I don't think anything of it. But um yeah, it is hard. And I think this is another thing. I I, I a lot of vestibular patients say, you know, I just stop talking to my friends and family about my condition because I feel like I'm, you know, I feel like I'm whining. I feel like I'm just saying the same thing over and over and it's just easier to just not say anything. But but if you don't talk about it, then it's not top of mind. And, and then when it does come up, they're like, and I've heard this before too. They're like, oh, you still have that thing? Yes. You know, that's still a thing. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I think it is important to just be, and, and you don't have to say it in a complaining way. Just say, this is what's going on for me right now. You know? Right. right. I think that helped me with the spoon analogy, um, the spoon theory back when I was, new to this, um, explaining to people of how many spoons I had left for the day. And, um, and that helped like, where, where are you today? My husband still asked me, do you have enough energy for this? Do you have enough spoons for the rest of the day? Or maybe you're doing too much. So yeah, there are different ways to explain it, but it does, you're right. We do have to talk about it because people do forget even even just because we're out there and on Facebook and on Instagram and people see us living our lives, they think that it is gone, but we still have to, we still have to keep talking about it. Yeah, for sure. You know, so I don't, I I don't have a vestibular disorder per se. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, I know that I have the genetic predisposition for it because of my mother and I, I've always had um, severe, severe emotion uh, sickness. So I know mm-hmm. that that's, you know, that's there. So, you know, mm-hmm. I knock on wood saying I don't have a vestibular disorder right now, right. Um, <laughs> that that is always the case, but I do, you know, I, I have other conditions like asthma where I can relate to the invisible part of it and the need to speak up and, 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 uh, and let people know how it's affecting you because I internalized it. Uh, well, before I was diagnosed, I just thought I was weak. You know, um, I couldn't, I couldn't do that hike, um, Mm -hmm. because I wasn't strong enough. Um, And even after I was diagnosed, there was a lot of question about that. Well, 
can't, you know, now, you know, you know, you can manage it, right? And you can, with these tools, then you should be able to do all of these things that, right. you know, and, uh, and I really had to kind of get to a place where, where I had to just, it was like the, the end of my rope, you know, I had to say, no, mm-hmm. I can't do it. Right. And I'm not going to feel bad about it. Right. You know, these are my limits. And I'm sorry that it negatively affects you. Mm-hmm. But that's just that's the way it is. And that's okay. It's okay. I don't have to feel bad about that. Yeah. Yeah. It's I think the first time you do it, the first couple of times it's really hard, but the more you do it, it gets easier. And then people start understanding. And yes, I've heard in the groups, well, I'm not invited anymore to things, but that's okay. You know, maybe yeah. you will just maybe they'll start inviting you again. (laughs) I tell my friends, please still invite me. Give me the option. If I'm able to make it, I will. If I can't, then, um, then I can't, but it's just still nice to be included and let me make that decision. But those are, those are tough things to talk about, especially, you know, when you're new into it, don't really know what's going on, but it's Mm -hmm. important. It is important. Yeah. Yeah. And, and even now, sometimes when it comes up for me, you know, it's, I get mad at myself. I don't know, you know, it's not my fault that this happened, but I get mad at myself that, you know, oh, I can't do yeah. that thing. Yeah. Um, so it's a, it is kind of a, you, you do have to continuously remind yourself that, you know, this is something that happened to you. It's not you. Right. Um, and yeah. uh, and give yourself grace. Um, Absolutely. So, yeah. And you're out there hiking with asthma. That's awesome. I do. <laughs> I mean, I, I, it, it's, it's, we have we have a whole system around it obviously i take um an inhaler with me um and my husband just my husband knows that he has to pick hikes that um that i can do that they're mm-hmm. not too steep and right. um you know if he if there's a hike out there that he wants to do and it's too steep i'm like well you you go i'm mm-hmm. i'm not going to go and it's okay that you go that's totally okay or we'll go um and we'll go to we'll go to a certain place and then I'll stay there. We have the system of, of hammocks. I think I've shared with you before. Yes, you do. Um, and I'll I'll <laughs> hang out in the hammock, and he'll keep going. So we can, you know, get the both the best of both worlds. That's great. You know? Yeah, it's perfect. But it's all about communication, and um, and like I said, just being, you know, he's it it does impact him because we can't go to the places that he wants to go. He wants me to go with him, mm-hmm. and we can't do that. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, it does. It impacts families. And, you know, if they if they love you, you know, they'll and even when he said even when I can tell that it is frustrating for him, I know it doesn't I know he's frustrated at that. He's right, not frustrated not at me. You mm-hmm. know, um, it doesn't mean that he doesn't love me. Mm-hmm. The fact that he is frustrated and working around it that he's willing to work through that frustration I think says a lot that's huge yeah so yeah oh he sounds like a peach <laughs> and he he did, he's definitely one to hold on to <laughs> that's good I know you've been with Vita about 11 years now is that right mm-hmm. yep yes so what's going on with Vita today I know I see you the new podcast I love it Oh, thank you. Yeah, gosh, so much, so much. I know. Um, and the, the question is always, you know, I was just, uh, um, we had a board meeting, you know, our board of directors, and I was giving a, a mid-year report. And and there's all the stuff that we, you know, we just do now. You know, it's like when I started, we had the, the these core programs. And our, our core programs are, which I'm, I'm sure most of the people who are listening probably are familiar with, our patient education um, programs. Um, and, and that started with the, you know, the, the articles that we have on our website, you know, if over a hundred peer reviewed articles on our website, um, our, uh, our provider directory, you know, getting that helps people get connected with vestibular healthcare professionals. And then, um, our support group network, you know, support getting people connected to peer support. So those are, the primary programs. And then we kind of have, you know, expanded from there and, and we just keep adding more stuff on. (laughs) So, um, so sometimes I forget to talk about the things that are now just things that we do as a matter of course. And and I just talk about the new things, but everybody might not know about this. So I'll mention a few of those things that I think are really, um, 
useful for people. One is, as you said, our new podcast. This year, we launched a new podcast called ICU, and and it's a collaboration with Unfixed Media and Kimberly Warner. Um, And I'm sure some people out there are familiar with her. She uh, is a vestibular patient herself and um, a, uh, a film producer. And uh, we, and I love, I mean, part of it is, you know, that we have these conversations and I bring, you know, my, uh, my experience talking to my, my experience as a, you know, a family member of a vestibular patient, but also, you know, the last 11 years talking to vestibular healthcare professionals and patients and Kimberly brings her experience as a vestibular patient and also, you know, through her work, all the work that she's done producing um, videos about vestibular patients and other chronic illness patients. So mm-hmm. the idea behind the podcast is we're bringing together a vestibular patient guest and a vestibular healthcare professional guest and having conversations. And I think that right. that's so important because mm-hmm. those are very different perspectives. And I can tell you from, you know, from leading an organization where our leadership is, and we've always, uh, that's always been the goal is to have leadership, our board of directors, which is a balance of vestibular patients and vestibular healthcare professionals, because they are coming from different perspectives with the same goal, but different, um, different experience and, and being informed by uh, by different things. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's the the podcast and we're, um, we're putting out one a month. Um, we also, um, we do have a new season of the Life Rebalance Chronicles, the, the video documentary series that Kimberly Warner um, has been producing. So that's mm-hmm. exciting. Yes. And I know you're, you know about that because you're I one do. of our guests <laughs> on that. Yes. Um, and I, we've had such a positive um, uh, response to those because people, that, that is, that's the storytelling. The storytelling yeah, is so important and people they hear their story um, through other people's stories mm-hmm. and they can use that to educate the people in their life. You know, they, they send uh, the links to these videos to their friends and family and they're like, listen to this. And they're, you know, they're not very long. So it's easy right. to listen to, listen right. to this. This is what I'm experiencing. And invariably I tell you every single time they make me cry, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and that's the, the um, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm, I don't want to make people cry, but no. I think that that, you know, it, it means that we are expressing the true uh, experience um, of the vestibular patient, you know, physical, mental, Absolutely. emotional. They're great. Uh, My then, parents, when they watched it, Cynthia, they... I've been dealing with this since 2016 when my symptoms began, when the symptoms began. And they called me and my dad was so choked up he couldn't talk. And they said, we had no idea what you were going through because I only share a limited amount with my parents, you know? So it's, it is, it's eye opening. And if you haven't watched the life rebalance Chronicles docuseries, I will leave the link in the show notes for you. Sorry. Well, glad <laughs> to say Thank that. you. Thanks. Um, so, you know, from the, from the educational standpoint, we also have our annual um, conference, uh, Life for Balanced Live, as you can yes. getting a, an idea of um, a message here, Life Rebalanced. Um, Life for Balanced Live is usually in March. And, um, and the idea is to bring together, you know, vestibular experts, it's five days, and each day has a vestibular expert um, sharing their expertise, an hour long talk where they're, they're sharing their expertise on a topic, um, answering questions, you know, in a, a live format. And then the next hour, um, so that's just informative and, and amazing. These people just, you know, they know vestibular uh, healthcare medicine backwards and forwards, and, and there's always something new to learn. Um, and then we follow that up with a patient panel on the same topic. And that gets back to what I was talking about before. Well, you need to have both the healthcare professionals sharing their expertise and the patients sharing their experience. It's mm-hmm. uh, it's like two parts of a whole, you know, and you can't really um, 
grasp the whole thing with, you know, with only one part. Uh, and the patients are just so, you know, they're, they're raw and, and sharing their vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and very often this, uh, the patients who participate in, in Life for Balanced Live, the Life for Balanced Chronicles and sharing their story in, in some way, come back to me later. And they're like, that was such a therapeutic experience for me to share and to look back on all that I, look at all that I accomplished, look right. where I have come. You know, mm -hmm. I, I don't take time to reflect on that. And I think that that's so important. It is. So, Cynthia, can uh, I ask you something about the live? It yeah. has that been, is that available recorded? Yes. Yeah. It we is. record okay. them and it is available. Yeah. We okay. have it on our website. Um, you can, you can get the recordings and, and transcripts for people who, you know, are hard of hearing. Okay. Um, and there's, we've, this is the first year we've included live captioning. So if, you know, if you're participating live and you're hard of hearing, you'll have live captioning as well. Awesome. So, yeah. So, um, you know, talking about some of the, the newer things that are going on, this is kind of newer, um, and, and something we've been doing, um, so in 2014, Vita started a patient registry. Um, and what that is, is it's a, it's a database of patient reported information on their medical history. Um, and, um, and since then, we've, we've actually published um, several papers um, in scientific journals based on data collected from the registry, which is hugely important, um, hugely, uh, it's a big deal because it you know, in, in the vestibule, in, in the scientific world, nothing exists until it's published. <laughs> right. So, so, you know, if we can, you know, take this, this patient reported information and publish it in a place where other healthcare professionals and, and medical experts are going to read it, then it becomes real. Right. Um, so, um, uh, so we, we uh, have been over the past year and a half, we've been in the process of revamping that patient mm -hmm. registry and uh, um, launching launching it on a new platform. There are numerous improvements to it that, you know, I won't go into here, but um, it's, it's number one, it's collecting more data than we had been collecting before, um, using some validated instruments, which are um, basically what that is, it's it's a survey that was developed um, and got, has gone through a clinical trial to um, to prove that it, the information that it produces is um, uh, valid in scientific research, which mm. is important. And, right. uh, and it also allows patients to connect to their electronic health care or electronic health records. So... Um, so that we're collecting, I mean, the patient ex patients reporting their data is very important, but certain pieces of data need to be validated by the, the, their health records, you know, so, right. um, and additional data that, that we're not collecting. So, um, mm. we just launched, relaunched our registry. Um, we're trying to get as many people to participate as possible so that we can, build the data, build this database. This will be like the largest database of information on vestibular patients that exists. And this will allow us to not only, you know, write papers ourselves, you know, we have um, uh, um, our, the, the president of our board of directors, um, Dr. Habib Razik, is the, the principal investigator for this study. And, and he can help us write papers based on the, the study, but, but we can collaborate with other researchers. So we're going, we're build, it's, it's like build it and they will come, right? We're building this database and other researchers are going to come and say, Hey, we want to use your data. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have the opportunity to, to partner with them on their research. Like recently we had somebody, a researcher who's working on um, MDDS, who, uh, who is like, wow, I can't believe that, you know, this, this database exists. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Oh. Researchers are looking for data mm -hmm. on vestibular, um, on vestibular patients and their, their medical history. So this is a really um, important, um, uh, it's, it's a really important thing in the big, big scheme, you know, in the, the mm -hmm. big picture. And it's not something that, you know, is going to, 
you know, tomorrow it's it's not going to revolutionize vestibular health care. But in the long run, this is a key part of it, you know. Right. So um, it, it is kind of an investment of time to, you know, to participate. In I the, was going to ask, how long does that take um, to do the... I think it depends right. on the person, you know, because... Okay. People, you know, some people are more or less technically adept. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, Some people can't sit at the computer for very long. Mm -hmm. So they might need to, you know, do a little bit and then come back and do a little bit more, which you can totally do. You know, good. There are um, there are four surveys that are part of our registry. Um, uh, The longest one probably takes about 15 minutes and the others are much shorter than that. The others take probably two to seven minutes, you can start and stop. Um, even the, even the, the longer one, you can start, get halfway through, stop and come back. Okay. That's good to know. Later. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, that, I, I think that's one of the really, really exciting things that we're doing is, um, you know, participating in research, um, collaborating with, uh, with, other healthcare professionals and professional associations like the uh, American Academy of Neurotology, um, the American Physical Therapy Association, the Barony Society, um, more collaboration on that level brings the vestibular patient experience um, to uh, to highlighted to be highlighted by these, by medical professionals, you know, and mm-hmm. I think that's, that's definitely something that's becoming more um, <clears throat> mainstream is um, uh, medical professionals are recognizing the value of uh, incorporating the perspective of vestibular patients in the development of, um, you know, new devices and um, diagnostic procedures Um and and I think that's where you know that's that's where Vita can really be the the hub um, for the vestibular community is to to bring together vestibular patients and make sure that their voice is heard. Right. Well, that's awesome. Well, I'm going to put a challenge out to my listeners. I will drop the registry link below, and I want everybody to register. I think I might have done it originally, but I um. What, even if I did it originally, can I go back in and re-register? Yes. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Uh, we, de- we actually, if you, if, if you did register with our quote old registry, right. this is totally new. It's on a okay. new platform. Um, and we actually will, we need, we do, ha- we have that data, but this is a new data set. Okay. We definitely want you to re-register. Awesome. Yes. Okay, good. Well, we will do that. <laughs> I'm just putting it out there. (laughs) Anything else going on? Gosh, so much. I know Um, we have right around the corner, we have um, a Balance Awareness Week right around the corner. Yes, we have Balance Awareness Week, which is our longest running event um, Mm -hmm. in September. um, And um, it's, it's, I I think most people are familiar with it in, in terms of um, spreading the word. This is our opportunity to spread the word about vestibular disorders. It's it's basically, you know, coming together and um, we talk it, you know, all year long. All year long, we're trying to raise awareness about vestibular disorders. But this concerted effort, it 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 makes um, such a difference that we're all on the same page, sharing the same message. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, Vita will be. Um, we'll be sharing a lot of information. Um, and, uh, um, of course there's the Fiona Flamingo photo contest that everybody loves. Um, which <laughs> it's, it's hilarious. The it's, it's hilarious to me that the flamingo, that, that the vestibular community has totally embraced the flamingo as their mascot yes. uh, and Fiona specifically. So um, <laughs> it's a fun way. It's a fun way to engage people. Um, it is. Yeah, and we're we are working again on trying to get um, uh, the Congress, the United States Congress, to recognize Balance Awareness Week. I think that that, you know, it 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 doesn't uh, necessarily it's it's not making a change in the short term, but in the long term, getting our getting our our faces, getting getting our name, getting the word vestibular out there mm-hmm. to policymakers is so important so that 
down the line when they are voting on something that is going to impact um, vestibular health care, you know, like increased allocation of research funding to the um, uh, to the, uh, you know, department um, that that, you know, covers vestibular health care. Mm-hmm. Then they, they've heard it before. And it's not this thing that they, you know, what is that thing that they know nothing about? Right. So yes, yeah. that's a big task. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, policymaking is, gosh, it's a, it's a long haul. Um, and uh, so anytime anybody has the opportunity, you know, to talk to their, um, their representatives, whether they're federal representatives or state representatives, just share your story. And Vita has actually um, on our website, we have a legislative advocacy toolkit that people can use that um, uh, it has templates for letters that you can send to your legislator, um, uh, uh, ways to, you know, find out who your legislator is, just a, a little a little um, uh, information about how to do that. Um, but it's it's just about, sh- it, it, again, it comes back to sharing your story. Mm-hmm. That's all you have to do is share your story. And um, it, it sounds really hard. Oh my God, I have to, you know, I don't, I don't know how to talk to, um, a, you know, a Congress person, but it's, you don't, you don't have to use fancy words. You just have no. to share your story. Yeah. And I, I think the vestibular community, uh, people are in different places in their journey. You know, you have people who, maybe don't even have a diagnosis yet. You have people who have a diagnosis, but haven't, you know, haven't worked out their, their lifetime coping strategy yet. And and you have people who are pretty far along in, um, in figuring out, okay, this is what I need, need to do to, you know, to figure out my quote new normal um, and, uh, uh, and to, to adapt. Um, and, and, you know, it's important for, for everyone to, to come together and to support each other. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that that support um, part is really important. And we talked about that in the beginning, the support networks that that Vita has built, um, online support groups, whether it's through, you know, Zoom or Google Meet or just mm-hmm. Facebook, you know, having a place, um, regardless of where you are in your journey, where you can check in with other people, get some validation, get some tips, um, yeah. and, uh, and, and, you know, it's for some people, it's really important for, for that to be there, you know, on a, a daily or weekly basis. And some people, you know, they just check in every once in a while, you know, right. maybe when, when they have, uh, an episode, um, and yeah. need that support, but and there I, are I, so I, many different groups out there to, you just have to keep trying to find the one that fits you. Cause I know that right. not, not every group out there is going to be for you. Right. So, Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. That's, that's a really good point. It's, and the same thing with healthcare providers, you know? No, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's really important to find uh, the one that, um, that you, that you feel like you can talk to who listens to you and, uh, and, and that, uh, that supports your, your overall wellness, a whole healthcare team, not, you know, I say healthcare provider and I mean a whole healthcare team because it takes that, you know, there's no one vestibular specialty you know it takes a whole team um work working doing doing their the the one thing that they do you know you mm-hmm. need the, the medical doctor who gives you a diagnosis and the audiologist who who you know takes you through that that long you know set of tests and then mm-hmm. the physical therapist who's going to be there to to support your your ongoing rehabilitation and and other ancillary providers as well one thing that you know we're we're talking about support and I I just you know want to give a call out to mental health um support as well you know it see, seeking out mental health care does not mean that there's something quote wrong with you it means that it's, you know, it's a tool in your toolbox. Everyone can use someone to talk to, um, someone who is, you know, um, uh, not, the, number one, someone who's, you know, not part of their immediate family, you know, doesn't, right. you don't have that, the, um, all that, all the ties that that comes with that, um, mm-hmm. but someone who is, uh, 
who, who knows how to lead you through a process of uh, taking a look at, you know, all the things that are going on in your life and, mm -hmm. and looking at them from a different perspective. Um, yes. And, and I, I say that um, because I truly believe it, but also because my husband is a <laughs> psychotherapist and I know it works, you know, I know it takes a special kind of person to, to do that. Um, and, uh, and I, I truly believe that it's a, really important part of working through, um, you know, any, any part of any chronic illness. I'm so happy you said that it is, and it may just be a temporary thing. It doesn't have to be a long process. Mm -hmm. so I know a lot of the therapists that I know see therapists or, you oh, know, psychologists. It's so. just, yes, it's just the way that they keep moving forward. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's yeah, my husband has always said, um, it should be required um, for, um, for mental health therapists to have seen a therapist so that they know what it feels like on the other side. Absolutely. We did a, gr um, a podcast episode called reaching out, where I was having a rough time, and I didn't reach out to anyone. And I had my, my um, therapist friend do a session with me live on the podcast. And she walked me through the whole thing. And also so people could get familiar with therapists, because a lot of people still have never seen a therapist to understand that. So it was a live session and she didn't hold back. She never does. <laughs> so um, she just kind of walked me through. And by the end, it, it just, um, it was a great episode and I get a lot of feedback from it. So reaching out is, is definitely important um, in this community. Wow. Yeah, um, I think it's helpful to get comfortable with um, letting people know what your boundaries are. And that's part of taking care of yourself. Yeah. So um, yeah, reaching out is part of that. Um, and it also, you know, you're, you're, you're it, it can be so isolating, um, uh, self isolating, if you don't reach out, mm -hmm. um, self isolating, if you think that you can't reach out, because people won't understand or, um, won't um, accommodate you. And, uh, and I think, you know, I've noticed just in general, people in general, not specifically, you know, people with chronic illness, but people in general who feel uh, comfortable with themselves mm -hmm. and um, confident with their boundaries, um, people are accepting of that, you know, they're yeah. accepting and understanding and they, and they really respect it. So, and I, I think that comes back to what we were uh, what we were talking about before and, and, um, you know, what I, I, I wanted to kind of finish with, which mm -hmm. is um, the community that we have built, I think is one of the most important things that Vita has done. Um, it's a community that um, validates the vestibular, don't feel like they're crazy. Mm -hmm. They don't feel like they're alone. <laughs> uh, it connects them with other people who get them and, and have been through the same thing. And, and, um, people who can support them, you know, uh, healthcare professionals and and others in the community uh, who uh, understand what they're going through, and it also gives them an opportunity to um, to help the to to give back, if you will, and and help the general um, vestibular community raise awareness about vestibular disorders to people who who don't get it. Right. Um, you know, what we like to call making vestibular visible, you know, yeah, making yeah. A, the vestibular is such a, a weird name, mm -hmm. um, but we can make it more visible um, when we talk about it. And people will, you know, through that um, uh, familiarity, uh, come to put together vestibular with dizziness, imbalance, and all the other things that go along with it. And, uh, and it will normalize uh, the vestibular patient experience so that they, they, they don't feel so um, misunderstood. Mm -hmm. That's true. This community so. is unlike any that I've ever been a part of. I mm -hmm. have made lifelong friends and most I've never met. I mean, well, 98% of them I've never met, but they're still um, my sisters and brothers in, in this vestibular community. I love it. Well, I um, hear that a lot and, yeah. and I'm both that people really, um, you know, they, they bond uh, with each other and, and also what we call our vesties, you know, people in the vestibular community are really passionate about making vestibular visible, about supporting each other, 
uh, more than other communities somehow that you know mm-hmm. people have been in and and i think that um it it makes it very uh, you know it it's a huge community it's a global community literally a global community mm-hmm. you know we have people from all over the world in um you know our support groups our online support groups and our facebook groups um but it feels personal and intimate and, and it feels like a family mm-hmm. for sure well, before we go on, because I know we're coming to a close, I know we could talk about everything for, for a while, but <laughs> um, is there anything else you want to to mention before we go on to Rowan questions? Um, I guess the only thing I would say is that, you know, we've talked about the community mm-hmm. um, is to get involved. You know, um, there, there are so many ways that you can get involved that are... Um, that are easy. I mean, there, there are a lot of people who are really involved and do a lot, you know, they serve on our committees, they serve on our board of directors, um, and and it's amazing. And that's how we get things done, right? Because we are a really small organization, but there are easy ways to get involved too. And it's really rewarding to feel like you're part of this community. So, mm-hmm. you know, reach out to us and, and ask us, how can I get involved? How can I volunteer, um, you know, support the community through um, donations, you know, small donations make a big difference. Everybody um, contributed, you know, small amounts, big difference. And it's, it's, it's about continuing this, um, continuing this mission to, to make vestibular visible and to help, you know, there's, there's always going to be somebody tomorrow who wakes up with dizziness and doesn't know what's going on with them. And we need to be there for them. That's true. Well, thank you, Cynthia. Thank you. I hope you get a lot of feedback and um, are busy <laughs> with new people reaching out to me. <laughs> That's what we hope too. <laughs> well, let's see. Now, these are just questions just as they come. It's just an easy, uh, lighthearted way to leave with just digging for a little bit more information, but it's just fun. So fill in the blank. Vestibular okay. disorder. I'll do my best. Okay. <laughs> vestibular disorders are? Invisible. What's one thing you wish that all vestibular warriors knew, regardless of their, uh, where they are in their journey? There's hope. Absolutely. What is your favorite book or novel? Um, gosh, that's, that's actually a hard one. I'm, you know, I'm trying to, you know, relate it to, um, something that, um, you know, we've talked about, um, okay. Gosh. It can be um, more on a personal level. It doesn't have okay. to be the stipula. I, I will share, <laughs> and this is something that's uh, more personal about me that people might not know. But one of my favorite books is My Family and Other Animals by Gerald Durrell. Oh. Um, and some people may be familiar with it because the BBC uh, more recently created a, a little mini series um, based on it called The Durrells. Uh, and it's just, it's it's fun. Um, it's kind of humorous. It's about... Um, uh, Gerald Durrell uh, was a, a naturalist, um, and it's about his time growing up with his family on the island, uh, the Greek island of Corfu. Uh, oh. I'm a big animal person, um, and I just one of the things I love about it is how he, as a a child, used this amazing opportunity to be on this you know this be- in this beautiful place um, with a lot of freedom uh, to explore. Um, and I, I love exploring the natural world uh, and the fascination uh, of every little bug that he came across. And also, you know, I, I also just it, it's also it's about animals, but it's also about people and his family and their relationship and how they're kind of dysfunctional. But that's OK. They work and they love each other. And um, uh, it's it's fun and meaningful. That's lovely. I'm going to have to backtrack and write that one down. <laughs> do you have a morning or bedtime routine of self-care? I do actually. Um, I, and I usually do it in the morning. Um, sometimes it ends up being in the evening, but I have about, um, I have a few um, chronic illnesses myself that are not vestibular related. Uh, I have uh, osteoarthritis uh, in my lower back. I have an injured shoulder from a car accident. Uh, and I do about an hour of physical therapy exercises uh, every day to keep those parts limber. Um, I think it's similar to uh, vestibular PT in that you know you think, oh, I, I've done this, I've done this work, and it's going to be, and then I'm going to be better. But that's mm-hmm. not how it is. You have to do the work every day. You know, there's this maintenance routine wow. that. Uh, that that you need to do. And it's just it is part of me now. You know, I don't. I'm not like ah. Oh, oh my God, I have to do this. It's like 
this is what I do. Um, yeah. And this it's is like a, a part of me. So right. yeah, that's a, a big part of my life. Yeah. What is on your nightstand? What's on my nightstand? <laughs> um, I have a spray of uh, essential oils um, that I like to put on my pillow mm. at night. It helps me sleep. And um, uh, I always, uh, it kind of, I guess this on my nightstand, my phone is on my nightstand and my phone, um, I use the Calm app at night Mm -hmm. um, to, you know, when I'm going to sleep and uh, sometimes it's a sleep story, sometimes it's music, sometimes it's a soundscape, um, but uh, yeah, that's kind of part of my, my nightly routine. That's nice. That's really nice. I've been, I noticed that Netflix has something similar, um, like a meditation nighttime routine. And I fall asleep before it's, before it ends every time. It's so nice. So I understand that calm. Yeah. Oh, always. Sometimes I wonder what, what happens at the end of the stories. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, okay, I can just listen again. (laughs) What's an activity that completely relaxes you? Ah, um, uh, being in nature. Absolutely. My, um, I, I shared this with some people, my husband and I, um, are big, uh, hikers. We, we do a lot of hiking in the mountains. Um, Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, we, we, we call it, we call it, um, extreme picnicking because I mean, you, we hike really hard to get out there. Right. Just love being in nature. I love everything about it. I'm, you know, it's, it's peaceful to me being in the trees. Mm -hmm. Um, it's peaceful for me take, you having a, uh, this expansive view of mountains or the ocean or, um, sitting by a Creek and listening to that, that noise of the, the burbling water. I love water. Um, I love water noises, especially. Mm-hmm. So we bring, um, hammocks. My husband, my husband actually makes these, uh, lounging hammocks, right? So we bring our hammocks, um, we have lunch, we take a nap, Uh, and then, you know, after my nap, I just sit there and I look at the trees and I listen to the Creek and that is the best moment in my, in my day. Um, I, I can't think of anything better to do. I'm reading a book right now, um, called for it's on forest bathing. Have you oh yes, forest term? bathing is is one of those. I I do call it forest bathing sometimes because when I'm out there, sometimes I'll like consciously reach my awareness out to try to kind of encompass the forest and yeah. and like you know touch the forest without touching it. You know what I mean? Touch it with my mind. Awesome. What's one movie that you could watch over and over and never tire of? Um. There are a couple. Um, one movie uh, that I have always loved is Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Um, and um, part of what I love um, about it is, you know, it's uh, it's without going into a lot of detail, it's about a personal journey. You know, um, there are several uh, characters in there having a personal journey. Um, and it's about finding yourself. Uh, which means accepting yourself and also letting go. I've never seen that. I've I've heard of it, but I've never watched it. I'm going to have to put that on my list. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's fun. It's action. You know, a lot of action, if you like, you know, martial arts, um, but also, uh, you know, I I feel there, there are also some very, um, you know, quiet, thoughtful moments in there. Well, the last question I have for you today, what are you extremely grateful for right now? I am extremely grateful that I have the opportunity in my life to um, to help others and the, uh, the flexibility um, to also uh, be aware and take care of myself. And I, and I feel like I have the support to do that both in my personal and professional life. That's awesome. Cynthia, it has been such a great pleasure finally getting to sit down with you. Yeah, me too. This is, I, I I love, uh, I love every conversation I get to have with people in our community. Um, and I hope that, you know, I, I don't know. Um, I hope, I hope that there's just a nugget in here that helps someone. Thank you, Cynthia, for sharing so much of what Vita has to offer. 
and thank you for doing what you do. And you, listener, thank you for being here. I certainly hope you gain more insight on what this amazing organization, Vestibular Disorders Association, does for this community. I had to go back a few times and listen because we discussed so much. Please see the show notes for all the ways we mentioned to reach out to find information in this episode to help you or a loved one navigate this vestibular world. If you learned anything from this episode, I would love for you to share it on Instagram or Facebook and be sure to subscribe and leave a review. It's so important. And as mentioned, I do have a challenge for you. So please head to the new patient registry, find the link in the show notes and enter your information. And also remember, Cynthia mentioned that you can stop at any time and come back and complete it later on. So be sure to take your time. Now, once you complete this challenge, I would love for you to let me know on social media, leave me a voice message or email me. I also have a small request for everyone hearing my voice today. If you could go to vestibular.org forward slash donate and donate anything, even if it's as small as five to $10, it would help the Vestibular Disorders Association help other warriors like myself and possibly you out there. Please find ways to reach us and be a part of this amazing community. See the show notes for all the links and be certain to share. Also keep your ears open for Balance Awareness Week. It's coming in September. And remember to love and be gentle with yourself. Lean on this beautiful community. And lastly, believe that healing is possible. I'll see you soon, warriors. Warriors.